There's a Gemara in Daf Dalid, Amar Aleph and Sachem. The Gemara says, Hamaske buys lechaveri. If someone rents a house to his friend, <coughs> who has to make the bedicha? Similar child. I'll say the last side before that. Boy, my name is Amnachem or Yitzchak. He asked a question about Amnachem or Yitzchak. Hamaske buys lechaveri. Someone rents a house to his friend, but Abba Osa the fourteenth, Ami lived there. And the master lived there. Does the master, the one who's renting out the house, have to make the bedikah the chamidah the dehi? It's his chametz. Oi, Dilma al seicha lived there. The seicha has to make the bedikah. Why the sura b'shusei koy? And we have over here. Uh, Ruben is renting his house to Shimon. Ruben is the owner of the house. He's renting it out to Shimon. There's chametz in the house. Now this chametz, we're not talking about Shimon's chametz. It's not the renter's chametz. The renter comes in, Yadal, he's not bringing any chametz with him. But, he comes in, the day before Pesach, two days before Pesach, he rented an apartment. Now, who's mechuyiv to make the bedika, to make sure there's no chametz in the house? The chametz doesn't belong to the renter. If there's any chametz in the house, it belongs to the owner of the house. So who has to make the bedika? Says the Gemara, does the owner have to make the bedika now because it's his chametz? He owns any chametz in the house. When he rented the house, he didn't sell the person the chametz in the house, or no? Does the renter have to make the bedika because he's living in he's living in the house, and now he rented it. It comes his rishos, and the chametz is of his rishos. That's the gemara is about. There's an obvious question, and the rishonim will ask the question: Why are we asking who's mechuyiv to make the bedika? Ask a better question: Who's whose chametz is it? Who's oyvim by your by your matzah? The more it phrases the question, on who is the Chiyah to make a belief? On the owner or on the renter? I have a much better question. Who's open by your Rabbi Yomotza? Whose problem is it? Who's open by your Rabbi Yomotza? So the Roshonim say a very big Kiddush. And the Roshonim say that an Issa by your Rabbi Yomotza, you won't have on anybody. The owner doesn't, is not open by your Rabbi Yomotza, because the Chomot is not his Roshos. He rented it out. Now someone else owns it. He rented it out. The renter is not even by Yerobah Yomotza, because it's not his chametz. It's the owner's chametz. He's not renting out the food, he's renting out the space. Yeah. The space, right. So, so, so. so the owner, no, but it, it, the chametz is not his just now. If, if I have chametz uh, in your house, property, property, my, not my property, room. right? So the chametz is not my... The, oh, right. I, if, I have, if I have chametz and it's sitting outside, in the in Hefker, in the street, right. I'm not even my rabbi Amatze. Right. Right. It's only chametz that's in your shush is a problem. Yeah. Chametz that's not in your shush, you're okay with. So the Shainim say here that there's no problem by rabbi Amatze because the owner is not even my rabbi Amatze, the renter is not even my rabbi Amatze. Why? Because one is because it's not his chametz, and one is because the chametz is not his property. It's somebody else's property. So no one has by rabbi Amatze. What's the Gemara's question? There is a chiv bedika. Just because there's no by rabbi by Yomotze, it doesn't mean there's no chiv bedika. You have to get rid of the chametz. But who do we put this tircha? <coughs> Whose responsibility is it to go and to make sure there's no chametz in this house? Is it on the maskir or is it on the seicha? Who has to do it? And the Gemara says, the Gemara answers. Amalu Malachim Ayitzchak Tani Na Hamaske Bais Tachaveiroi Im Atzeloi Mosalei Mafteichos. If forty that night came before he gave over the keys to the seicher, the master lived there. If the master, the owner, didn't give over the keys yet, and it's not a fourteenth at night, then the owner has to make the bedika. But if he gave over the keys before the fourteenth at night, the lived there. Then the seicher has to be avoided. That's what the Gemara says. Those are the words of the Gemara. If the owner gave over the keys before the 14th at night, then Leil Abba Asar, then the the circle the has to do it. If the owner didn't give over the keys, he still has the keys in his hands, then the owner has to make the bedik. If he's got the keys, he's got position. That's what it is. Oh, so that's the question. What does it mean? What does the Gemara mean he gave over the keys? What is the key saying over here? So Rashi and the Ran both learn. That giving over the keys means a kinyan. That means you coin it. I rented it to you, but we make a deal. I'm going to sell you a house, let's say, right? 
I can say I'm going to sell it, but there's a Kenyan when I get the house. The same thing with Shiris. When you say you're going to rent something from somebody, or to somebody, there's a certain time that it becomes the renters. The first of the month, it becomes the renters. Whenever it is, it becomes the renters. How does it become the renters? You have to have a Kenyan. Everything in the Torah has to have a Kenyan. So Rashi and Duran say there's a Kenyan over here. How about a check? Is that like a Kenyan? Can you cast it, maybe? So the question is, what's exactly a Kenyan? So Rashi, Rashi says a Kiddush, that give, it's Mashmah from Rashi, that giving over the keys itself is already a Kenyan. And they're showing a match. We don't find anywhere that Mysterious Amaf Techais is a Kenyan. The Ran learned, no, there was a Kenyan already. What was a Kenyan? We signed the contract. Every time you rent something, you sign a contract. We signed the contract. Now, the Seicher owns it. And must waiting for the key. So the Ran holds. Even if you signed the contract, and you made a Kenyan, but if the owner didn't give over the keys to you yet, it's, it's, still, it's not complete. It's still part of doing a Badika. That's what the Ran says. Taisa says something else. Taisa says, we don't care about a Kenyan. It's not dependent on any Kenyan. Let's even say you, you weren't kind of it. You didn't make a Kenyan in the, in the, in the house. But once the owner gives you over the keys to the house, now you're Mechoy from Medika. Why? Because if he gives you over the keys, the owner is going to solve himself from the house. There's no way of getting into the house. You, renter, are in the house now. It's your house. So if it's your house, you have to make sure there's no comments in it. Without a Kenyan. Even though there's no Kenyan. So the Rad says only with a Kenyan. You rented it, you made a Kenyan in it, and you got the keys. Now the circle has to be avoided. But if there's no Kenyan, the circle doesn't have to be avoided, it's on the mask to be avoided. Tais says not to me. Tais says who has to be avoided? Whoever has the keys to the house, whether you kind of it, there was a Kenyan, whether there's no Kenyan, you have to be the one to avoid it. That's what Tais says. There's a big difference between the two cases. <coughs> if there's no Kenyan, you just rent someone's house. But you, oh, not just rent someone's house. You're living in someone's house. You go into someone's house at Pesach, and you're taking over the house. He gives you over the keys. Here's the house. It's yours. Who has to make the bedikah? The owner or the person who's living in the house? But that's how it's totally in one thing. You give over the keys. He's mechui. The person who's living in the house is mechui to make a bedikah. Do we go like that? that we'll see. We'll see. For example, the case my neighbor, he's leaving for Pesach. He's letting me sleep there. So there's a question. Who has to make the bedikah? Sleep only. But I'm not paying for it. Doesn't make a difference. We'll see you in a second. We'll see you in a second. I don't care what the machlek is. Long the bottle will be in the edge of the He has to make the bedikah. It's not going to be me. <laughs> so we'll see. So, so, <laughs> so the machaber says, how does the machaber pass again? The machaber no says, Nobody wants me to take over his house. I'm, 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 and he was kinded, he made a Kenyan. That means the circle had to have made a Kenyan. The Chaber holds, the circle has to have made a Kenyan. Shaskiris Karka Nikneboy, who was kinded with a regular Kenyan, Ketzer Shara Chazaka. Im Achle Mosul Maftea Kal Yudalid, if Yudalid was before he got the keys, Alamaska lived there. The Maska slaughtered everybody did. But Im Bisham Mosul Maftea Kal Yudalid, if after you gave over the keys, now it's Yudalid. Allah Seicha lived in. The Mechamah Paskins, even if you give over the keys, it's not enough. You have to have a Kenyan. The Seicha has to be kind of the house. The Seicha is kind of the house, and he gets the keys, then he has to do the Bedikah. That's what the Mechamah Paskins, this is like the Shittas Aram. Shittas Aram that holds, you kind of it, and you get the keys, you make a Bedikah. If not, you don't have both of them, you don't get the Bedikah. That's the Shittas Aram. According to the Mechamah, if you're at someone's house, if you're not clean it, you're living there, that and you you don't have to make a bedikah. Who has to make the bedikah? The masker has to make the bedikah. So if let's say the masker, the owner of the house, is going away, so you say, well, good before he leaves. You go into the house, you have no worries about a bedikah, even though you have the keys for the house. But, according to the place, we're different. And the original brewer brings down that most of the achreinim go to chumr even with the place, he was kind of this morning the Kenyanim, and the Gam Messias Maftayah. 
he gave over the keys to Ran Shitan. But that's a taste of his Pesiatum to be mysterious, Mafteach, Levad, Koydel, Ascholos, Yedal, and Chal, Chavis, Abadik, Al Sacher. Why? What's the reason why? It's very important to know. The Ain Hamaske Yochel Lichna is boy. Because the mask can't enter it. He can't get in there. Sha'in Hamafteach be Yodon. Well, the chain, therefore, tilum a chiyob al ha seicher, therefore, you put the chiyob on the seicher. So there's two sets of keys? Oh, the two sets of keys are something different. So, the, right now, we just had an explanation to Taisus. Why does Taisus say it's dependent on who has the keys? Because if I give over the keys to you to live in the house, and now I can't get into the house, I'm not allowed into the house, so now, how can I make a bedika? Therefore, the seicher has to make the bedika. So we have here the round of holds only if you made a Kenyan, and you have the keys. Tesha says if you have the keys, it's enough to have you in a Badika. But only if you're the only one who has the keys to the house. You give over the keys, and the maskir can't get into the house. And we ask my friends, the Kosfu, Shanachoy, Mahachim, Kishnehem, the Yemkain, Chi, Badika, Bazeh, Allah, Sekha, Viha, Maskir. Both of them. We go to Khumra. We go to Khumra here. Therefore, between the two of you, you have to make sure the house is voided. And if one of you, didn't do it, then you both have the, you both have the problem that you didn't make a bedika now. That's the way the Mishmuru passes. So now let's get down to some practical cases. So this is all to give over the key. Now the famous question that everyone speaks about is is the case of a hotel. Start with uh, that case. You go to a tougher place. So if you come to the hotel on the 14th. Erev Pesach, you were home, you left the house in the morning, you end up in the hotel on the 14th, so you, and, you, and you're and staying in the hotel the whole Pesach, you never have a key of in the hotel. Because so the 14th at night, you never get the key, you had nothing, the Badika is chal the 14th at night. The owner of the hotel is not to make a Badika. You have no key to make a Badika. You come into the hotel Erev Pesach, at the 14th already by day, the key of Badika is chal, on the 14th at night, you come to the hotel on the 14th by day, you have no key of So you're saying the owner of the hotel has to do the in every single room? Like that. The, yes. The owner of the hotel, if it's a Jewish hotel, it's in the Shaliyah. The owner of the hotel, if it's a Jewish hotel, he's a Chuyiv to make a Bedika throughout the whole hotel. What happens if he sells you the room? Are you having the contract? I'm not a Chuyiv for anything. Let's say Borapar. Where do he sells the room? During the Pesach, I have nothing to do with everything in the room long so That's only if I take it over in the four, before the 14th at night. And if before you come here Pesach on, on the 14th day. The, 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 the Chibadik is on the, is on the owner. Have to do I have to do the let's, night. let's look at this way. You have a hotel, right? You have a hotel. And you have rooms there. People are coming in every Pesach. So no one is going to make a Badika? No, you can't say that. Someone, someone's going to make a Badika. Yeah, uh, who? So who? Someone has to make the bedikah. But in a non-Jewish hotel. Oh, so, so, it's, it's, a, so it's a non-Jewish no, hotel. No, it's a non-Jewish hotel. hotel. It's a whole different question. There's no key bedikah, they'll you tell it. The owner is non-Jewish. Right. So you have a... No, so, so when you come in, Most you're coming in, you tell it. You're not a chuyif. You're not a chuyif. You're walking into a hotel room with a little fridge that's filled with liquor. What's the situation? So you own it or you don't own it? You don't own it. You only own it once you buy it. Comes to the room. No, so, no, no, no. Once no, so if you rent it, if you rent the hotel room, and that's part of that they give you, that you have to get rid of it before paying. I'm sure. No, no. You can't own it. If you have to pay for it, you have to pay. For it. As you use it, what they give you? Yeah. If you have to pay for it as you use it, so that it's not yours. It's not yours. I want to advise you leaving the room. That's a whole different question. If you're over by your raw, by your on comments of a guy that's in your house, do I see enough? So if you have a ghost comments in your house, you have to either build a gather around it or close it off, lock the refrigerator, whatever, put a sign there, comments here, and you find yours, then you're okay. What do everybody has an office? And and go in with your or or different different rooms in the office. So it it depends, so it depends. If you own the office, it's your office. And the schemter shall go, you're okay. Okay, schemter shall go, you're okay. Go is not a comment to your office. Is any different than the hotel? The food's not yours. It's not saying it's not different than the hotel. It's not the hotel, if, it, if you don't own it, right. don't. you have to buy, you have to pay for it every time you take a drink, you take a beer, right. then it's not yours. You're not everybody robbing so money. 
He can leave it there. No. But it's not no, but since no, since you could come and take it, right. the luck is you have to put a simon or something to tape a chart that you go, a guy comes into your office with his own sandwich. You're not gonna eat his sandwich, you have to worry about it. But if you're in a room and this guy's comments in your house and you can take it and buy it if you want, then you have to put a sign there or or lock it up in a way that you shouldn't get to it on paper. That's, and that's all when it's a non Jewish hotel. But if you're in a Jewish hotel, it's owned by a Jew hotel. So if you're coming here on the 14th, so now the owner of the hotel has to avoid to get the Abasa the night before the 14th, the owner of the hotel has to make a badika. Should you do a viewer, just in case? What, a Do something to Bittal in case there was any. Who said, who said you can make a Bittal? It's not your comments. In the room you rent it. It's your comments? No, it's not your comments. So how can you make a Bittal? What's it going to help? It's not yours. The owner should make a Bittal. No, he's not Jewish. Oh, the owner's not Jewish? He's so not Jewish. You go to a hotel, there's something under the bed, you don't see. Right? It's, mm-hmm. not, it's not yours, you don't own it. Yes, but but you can't do a bit on it. It's not yours, you can't do a bit on it. Right, cover it up. So if it's yours, you have to cover it up, lock so you it up. Treat it like you would the liquor. Like, like, not, right, exactly, like liquor. So that, that's, so, so, so again, if it's a Jewish hotel, you're coming in, they have the, the owner of the house to make a liquor beforehand. Let's say you come in, the day before a place, I come in, so this year, come on Sunday to the hotel, and you, they give you over the keys, and now it's your hotel room. So it comes Leil Abba Asar. Sunday night. Sunday night, it's yours now. You're a Seicher, you went to the room for the Yom Tif, you have a Chiyiv Bidika in that hotel room. But come out all the place came as a Chiyiv for you to make with the Bracha to go make a Bidika in the hotel room. Because now it's yours. That's if you come in, you can come in your gimel, anywhere from your gimel, and before you have a chiv because you're the seicher, you have the key, you have to make a bracha. So if you have the night time to do it, at night, yes. That, that's at night you have to make the bedika. Lel, lel, your dalit, you have to make. You have, you have a chiv bedika. You're a seicher. You, you went to the hotel room. You have to make a bedika. That's a hotel room. Some place you want to say, but I think most places don't go with it. But even a hotel room, it's not really yours. Because I'm renting a place to stay in the hotel building. If let's say they want to, they decide they want to change your room, do they have the right to change your room? Probably. Yes. If they have the no right, if they have the right to change your room, <coughs> whatever they yeah, want, they know. That, once, you, once you take it over, they know. That's that's a question. They can. That, that's if they need it, they can change. Right. If, if, if they need it, they come and explain to you. There's a leakage. There's something. Someone if they, else, that's something's that's not question. working. Some we'll person want to say that you really, you really not search the room because not because because, because if you, if you rent an apartment, they can't just throw you out. There's rules, and you can't just yeah. throw you out of apartment. That's a long period. You'll be yeah. talking. It's just. If they're talking you renting a, it's a quick uh, rental, right? It's a temporary, temporary, temporary rental for a hotel room for a couple of days. Some place can want to say since the owner of the hotel could switch your room whenever he wants. Yeah. Therefore, it's not called a sikhir. So most person will go with that. Most person can hold. If you rent a hotel room, you must to make a bedikah. That's if you rent a hotel room. Now, I'm not renting a hotel room. <coughs> I'm taking over someone's house for Pesach. Right? I'm living in someone's house for Pesach. So, on who is the chiv to make a bedikah? So, if you rent the house, then the chiv is the on you. That's I'm not renting the house. You're borrowing the house. I'm borrowing the house. Person has to stay there, sleep. sleep there, whatever it is. So, there really it's much different. Because there, when you go into a place to sleep, the only reason why it should be mechuyiv a bedikah is because of taisvus. So when you give over the mafteach, you give over the key, the chiyiv is calling you. Taisvus only said so because right now I'm the only one who has access to the house. But if the owner, whenever he wants to come in the middle of Pesach, he happens not to be around. He happens to be went to Florida for Pesach. But if he wants to go into the room whenever he wants, he decides he's coming by chalamayit and he wants to go into the house. He goes in without even asking you. There's no question about it. In such a situation, the owner is the one. That's mechuyiv to do the bedika, not the person who's borrowing the house. Because the person who's borrowing the house, when he's in the house, it's not that the owner can't come into the house. The owner can come whenever he wants. He happens not to be here. So, the that's why the owner has to go ahead and make a bedika, not the person who's borrowing the house. Then you have another situation. You go someplace with your large family, a lot of little kids, a lot of baggage. You arrive on the 14th, around noon. 
you think your bags are okay. You haven't done a bit though because you didn't do a you didn't do a search for columns. So whatever is in your luggage is your possession. Okay. You know, and it's your kids' stuff too, right? Toys and things like that. So do you have any concern that what you brought to the house is your own comments? Yeah, sure. You have comments in your house. You don't have a house, that's it. You just have bags. You have suitcases. Yeah. Suitcases, yeah. You have to buy the suitcases. So, so... You have to buy the suitcases now when you get there on the 14th. When you pack. When you pack it, the 14th, the, the night before, you have to buy the suitcases. Make those no comments inside. So you did all those things, right? If you left comments in there, and you know, this comes I'm keeping for tomorrow, no, no, no. You you think that it's it's empty, right? Yeah. You, you know, you somewhere in your kid's socks, you put a, a bagel or something. You yeah. those bagels, and you just couldn't manage to get through bags like that. And you missed it. Right. Now you brought a bagel to the hotel or to the, the place. Mm -hmm. So my my question, I'm coming back to the same question, which is, is there a way to do a bithel? Yeah. You definitely you know, do, a you you do a bit of, you do a bit everyone does a bit of a Pesach, you do a bit of a Mavatl or something, just in case you have okay, a situation. Okay, so you do it wherever you are. Yeah, yeah, sure yeah. you make a bit Okay, that's what I want. You, you always make a bit That's what I want. Now, there's another, there's another question here, which is, a kid going to the parents' house of Pesach. So what happens is, kids move into the parents' of Pesach, and they get a certain room. The kids get a certain room, they're staying in that room for Pesach. Right, it's so two rooms, whatever it is. So now, on who nailed your dollar? On who is the Chi of Vedika? On that room? Who is the boy in that room? How old is the kid? Look at all the kids. Married kids, let's say. Coming in. On who is the Chi of Vedika on that room? The parents or the kid? The parents are the owner of the house and the kid is getting the room. So according to Toysmith, it's very possible when a parent gives over a kid the room for Pesach, so it depends on the situation, but most situations, the way it works is, this is your room for Pesach, and the parents will never walk into that room, especially married children. <coughs> married children, when the parents give over a room to the kids for Pesach, no one's allowed to go into the room. This is their room, and no one's allowed to go in, right? Married kids especially, it's their room. So now, if a kid comes two or three days before Pesach, and he gets this room, you're right, the parents could walk into the room if they want. No one's going to stop them. The kids won't stop them. But if someone sees the parent walking into that room, hey, what's going on? That's my room. So there, a lot of person would hold, in such a situation, the kid is mechuliv to avoid the room, not the parent. Because that room is given over to the kid for Yom Tif, and the parents stay out of it. They will not walk into the room without permission to the kids, which is very common. The married kid gets a, gets a room. The parents want to go into the room and say, and he told them, can I go into the they room? They don't want to go into the room. They don't want to. <laughs> they don't want to. But if they need, let's say they would need something from the room, they would even ask the kid's permission, right, right. can I go into the room to get something? Right. And the kid said, yeah, sure, go in. In such a situation, the kid who's staying in that room is going to to boy his own room. Not the parent. So if there's comments in that room, it's not uh, actually the parent. No, so the we spoke in the beginning of this year that maybe by Yorob by no one will be over. Because that <coughs> one because it's not his or shus, the one because he doesn't own it. But the Chiyah Bedika is something else. So the kids come to the parents of Pesach. On the 13th. On the 13th, yeah, the 14th, before. yeah. 13th and before. Yeah. And he's living in that room, or even sometimes the parents give him a couple of rooms together for him and his kids. And the parents won't walk into the room without permission of the kid. That kid is a Mechuyah to avoid the two, and they can make a bracha. They can make a bracha. They can make a bracha of Bedika's comments and go be avoiding those rooms. Some yeah. person will say that the parents will be mocking it to him. To be, because they're a ranch eater. Even though a machmir, like this. But if he comes on the 14th, then no, 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 no. A kid that comes on the 14th, no, no. the parents are mechuvah to the night before. It's, it's, it's a parent's responsibility. Yeah, the, 14th, the night before. They're, 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 they're the, the only night, ones in their house. They never gave it out. Right. The Titus Chumra comes out, it's not dark when you give over the keys. It's a situation <coughs> where that room is meant for one person and no one else goes into that room. Okay. Then the Chaki part of the person who lives in that room is equipped to make the Medica, not and not the parents. So this is a very common thing. Kids That's come to the yeah, parents, yeah. the kids should make the Medica in their room and the parents don't have to do it. They come a couple days before Pesach. Then you have another question with offices, <laughs> dormitories. Let's say a dormitory. Who's equipped to avoid the dormitory? 
Every yeshiva, kids always there. Depends on kid. Depends on yeshiva. Depends on kid. Who's the to make a bedikah in the dormitory? So there's, there's different yeshivas have different ways they set up dormitories. The dormitory is set up that this room is for this two or three kids for the whole year, and the yeshiva doesn't go in there. They have no shaykhs to, to that room, and they don't switch the rooms in the middle of the year. Then the kids in that room, in that dormitory, before they go to Pesach, I'm going to make a bedikah. That's the yeshiva. Most yeshivas today are set up that the dormitories are not the bochur is with us. It's the yeshivas with us. They go and do whatever they want. The yeshivas say, I'm going to clean it. Right? The yeshivas will to clean it as on the yeshivas' responsibility to make sure that it's maintained. Then it's the yeshivas' responsibility to make the bedikah. But if you have a dormitory where a kid gets, the, gets a room or an apartment, especially when you have apartments, when you have yeshivas that don't have enough room in the dormitory, they have apartments and the yeshiva arranges it even. But it's given over to the bachrim, it's theirs for the year. Then the bachrim are mechurved to make the bedikah. For the same reason. Because now, even though they're not paying rent, and they don't, they don't have a Kenyan, you have Taishvis Chiyuv. That if you're the sole person who enters that place, and if somebody else wants to enter it, he needs the key, or he needs permission to enter it, then the Badika is on the person who's in the room, not on the owner of the house. So if you have five guys that rent an apartment, the Christ is on all of them? All five of them. And they, they can delegate one person to Yeah, them. they can make a shliach. The Christ is on all of them. And the same thing if someone... he's not there? They're not there over Pesach? Then they have Can to they do sell it? No, they shouldn't. So, so, so they, they, do, they do it the night before they leave. The night before they leave, you make the bedikah. They do the bedikah. Yeah. So they can't sell it, that. So yeah. selling it, it's called a mechir shud gimel. You can't sell it on your dollars. Mechir shud gimel right. is a way you sell it, and you mafkir yourself, you get yourself out of the whole fear of bedikah. The question is exactly how that works. It's better that they should make the bedikah the night before they leave. Mechir shud gimel is only in certain situations mm-hmm. to rely on it. You don't like to say everyone go make a mechir to the gimel. Do they say anything before on the 13th, if they, on the 12th, let's say they do a bedikah? They, they don't make a bracha. They, they say nothing. Kol chamirim. They say kol chamirim. Yeah, after you finish, say kol chamirim. Get rid of all the chamas, then you leave, and then you're finished. You're finished. You're biting that, you're yaitzer, and then you're okay. So there's a difference between selling our whole house. For sure. And the selling whole. a room that you're renting from you know, the house that you're going to leave. Basically. You're yeshiva, you're yeshiva in Israel. Right. right. You have a room. Right. You're coming back to the to Canada. Basically. Right. So that room is going to be locked up. Nobody's going to be in there while you're gone. You know, it's, it's your domain. If you if it was your own house, you could sell the whole house, and you don't have to do the search. Right? If it's your room. If it's your room in yeah. somebody's. You sell house, the room. You can sell the room. You could, yeah, you could. So you could treat it like you sell the room. You could, but then you have to do it. Uh, then you have to do it on, on your gimel. You have to sell it. Right, right. Yeah, we we, we try not to do mechiras and gimel. We try to if you mechiras to avoid the gate, you buy the gate before you leave. And any chametz you have there, you could sell. Right. The chametz, not the whole house. And therefore, mechiras and gimel basically what you're trying to do is trying to mechiras yourself in the whole bedikta. I rented it out beforehand, so I'm not here to avoid the gate all. That's what we try to do. Which we do in certain situations where you shouldn't do it every single time. You're going with Yom to sell your whole house and you don't have to avoid it. There's a key of Badika even if you're not going to be there for Yom Tov. If you're leaving within 30 days. There's always a key of Badika. What about the office? Oh, the office. Right, that's what the office is. Now, the office is the same thing. If you own your own office, so then you're sure you're going to make a Badika on it. But then you have people who work for other people. And they have an office. They don't own an office, they don't pay rent, but it's part of their job. This is your office, and then, so if it's a room that you share with other guy and everything, then you're not mechir to buy this, you're mechir to buy your desk. You have a desk, you're mechir to buy that desk, that's your domain. Anything that's your domain and nobody else's, you have a chiv to buy the on it. But if it's, if it's not, if you're in a room with a bunch of guy and a guy owns it, so he's, it's his responsibility. He's a guy, he's part of Ambedika. But if, it's, if you own the office, for example, some people have their own office, and they have a key to the office, I lock it when they leave at night, and no one's allowed to go in there, even though it's in a guy's company, and you don't pay rent, 
You don't rent your office. You have a job, and part of your job is they give you an office to work from. But that office, no one's allowed to walk in besides you. Someone walks into the office, they will ask them, what are you doing there? And you have a key to the office. Then you have a clue to make a badika in your office. All these offices, cleaning staff can come in and come it in every night. It doesn't make a difference. They even, come in. Right. Even though cleaning staff come in, it's still your office. Well, even no, if you said something about, well, no one else can come in. Right, but the cleaning staff comes in with your permission. If you want a hotel, you rent a hotel room, right? You also have cleaning staff coming in every day. To come, to make, right. ch- change the linen, make the beds, right? That's part of the service they're giving you. But it's still your place. It's still your room, it's still your office. If you decide I mean, one people night... People can still come in, it's still my office. People can, but people are still can come in. And they could come in, but they don't come in without your permission. It's your office, they don't yeah. come in without your permission. It's called your office. Yes. According okay. to you, you walk in and find somebody in your office. Yeah. If you walk in and find somebody in your office... Yeah, my assistant is allowed to come into my office. Assistant, yeah. To but put things in, yeah, but, take things out. But that's because yeah. it's, your, it's your assistant coming into your office. Yeah. Only it's your assistant, yeah, yeah. <coughs> but still your office. So if it's your office, then you're required to make a bedikin. Go, go, go like this, right? You're yeah. not you know, required because uh, you don't own it. There's no kinyan in it. But according to Taisvish, if you're the one who who uh, sure. controls it, then you're required to make a bedikin. There are coolers. I'm saying if they, if you have if there's a reason why to make a little chum, we go like Taisvish. There are times. That they'll be maker because the mechaber passes like the ram. You have to have a kinyan. That's what the mechaber passes. We go the chumra like tayshvis, even though you don't have a kinyan. If you control the room, you're mechuyev to make a bedikah on it. Therefore, there's sometimes there'll be a kula, but that in most cases, if you if it's your office and it's uh, no one no one could walk in there without any permission, then you're mechuyev to make a bedikah in that office. You put, that, you put that address on the form which you give to the rabbi to when he sells everything. Include your office address and its contents. Mm-hmm. Right, but if you sell to the rabbi, if you sell your gimbal, sell your office and your gimbal, then you, you don't have to make a petition. But if you sell on regular mechiras chomet, like most of us do on your dalit, right. then you have to make a petition. The office. Gimel. Same as the house. Same as the house. Same as the house. We try, we try not to go with a petition to the gimbal. Whenever we could. You sold them in your gimbal. You can't use it on. The next day. Uh, no, if you sell it, if you sell it, and you give it, basically, what Chiyus says, give it basically is, you're renting it out, you're giving it away to somebody for the whole yomtiv. If you're gonna go back in and live there, talk about Chiyus says, give